Welcome to the Prevailing Prayer Podcast with award-winning Christian authors Alana Terry and Jamie Hampton. The Prevailing Prayer Podcast, changing the world one prayer at a time. Hi guys, it's Alana Terry. We have a trivia question for those of you who have been listening to the show for long enough. You will know what both Jamie and my favorite episode is. And if you don't, don't worry, because you're about to listen to it. Our favorite episode is Prayer Legacy. And the reason, and you'll see the reason. We're not even going to go into that. You'll see the reason that we You'll have to listen to find out what makes sense. For the reason, yes. But this (laughs) is a really fun episode. And one that I just feel is really meaningful for us in our podcast, because our podcast is kind of a prayer legacy, the result of a prayer legacy, I guess you could say. It is in a way. Yeah. 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 So- Keep on listening if you if you want to, you know, find out like what even is a prayer legacy, and also make sure that you have subscribed to our email list at alanaterry.com slash subscribe, because why, Jamie? Why do we want people to go there? Um, so that they can definitely not miss an episode, but also get information about a very um, exciting new resource that we probably will have available this week so you know go on and check it out and and you might find this really cool resource that we've been shedding blood sweat and tears over for the last couple of months (laughs) yeah yeah so we are super excited that's one of the reasons why we are doing some of these uh, rerun episodes but also we just really um, love some of these earlier topics and are excited for the chance to and to keep them fresh in your mind. So with that, let's open up our prayer legacy episode with a word of prayer. Father, we just come before you today with humble hearts and just with a desire not to just live this life while we're here on earth, but to leave something behind. God, we just pray that you'd help this conversation today to help bring to light some ways that we can leave prayer legacies for the people that that come after us, God, and just be glorified in our time today and in our conversation. And we just thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Psalm of the day is from Psalm 53. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. They have all become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on God. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, where there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And our meditative morsel today is from Charles Spurgeon. And he says that true prayer is measured by weight, not by length. A single groan before God may have more fullness of prayer in it than a fine oration of great length. That's neat. I like Charles Spurgeon a lot, and my husband does too. You know, most sermons will end up with some quote or other coming from him. And, you know, I like what he says about about prayer and and I like the the mention of the single groan before God, you know, that sometimes that's all the the stamina we have for our prayers, and that's okay in God's God's sight. Yeah, and I think sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that our Prayers have to be flowery or that they have to be long and drawn out, but it is. It's those those groans too deep for words that God, um, they just go directly to God. It says the Holy Spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words and they just go directly to God. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. So our persecution spotlight today is a story that's kind of inspired after my grandma. We're going to be talking a little bit about her later on in the prayer legacy that she left and also one of the characters in my novel that's kind of modeled after her. And one thing about my grandma, I think I've mentioned it before on the podcast, that she grew up as a missionary kid in China and even up into her 70s would go back on mission trips to China smuggling Bibles. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the story of Project Pearl, it's um, 
kind of like it's it should be a blockbuster movie seriously it's you know like one of the most action-packed adventure stories that i've read regarding mission work and it is the story of a tugboat that pulled a barge that had 232 tons of waterproofly packed bibles into china and it was um obviously a very secret mission and was completely covered in prayer and just a really really exciting story so if you wanted to learn more about it just google project pearl or you can read the book of one of the men who was kind of involved in spearheading the operation so a million bibles were brought into china in 1981 on this barge and it's it's such a neat story and i think we can use it as a basis for prayer today for the believers in china and in other areas where they are so short of on bibles and also where it's dangerous to bring bibles in and possibly even dangerous to own bibles and one of the neat stories that came as a result of project pearl is it really puts the communist government in china to shame when they found out you know that these millions of bibles had been brought into their country and it kind of got their ball rolling so now the chinese government does print a set number of bibles it's certainly not enough to cover the need for all of the christians especially in the underground churches and stuff and most of the state printed Bibles, you know, have to be registered and, you know, there's a lot of complications there. But I think it's, it is neat that this mission actually changed their policy on Bibles. So today let's just be praying for the Bible smugglers and distributors and underground believers who benefit from, from these kinds of things. God, I thank you for giving us the story of Project Pearl. I thank you that we are able to hear the story and be so encouraged by it. Thank you for allowing so many Bibles to make their way into China, God. And this was quite a long time ago, but I know that you know exactly where each of those million Bibles are right now. And that's such a neat thought. And I pray that each of those Bibles would be bearing fruit and that the people who are reading those specific Bibles today would be full of boldness that anyone who's reading them that isn't saved would be saved. And I pray today just for the safety and protection of any Bible smuggler or Bible distributor or any of the underground believers who are worshiping you today. I just pray for their safety and for their courage. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, what an amazing story. Um, kind of in line with our topic today of prayer legacies our prayer adventure is about Moro Graham who is the mother of Billy Graham which I'm sure many of you or almost all of you probably know who that is a great evangelist of our time and in his autobiography just as I am he shared some stories about his mother and just kind of the the role that she played in him becoming the man that he is and the evangelist that he is and he grew up in the depression and he said that it, it's kind of easy to feel nostalgic about the old days. You know, he grew up on a dairy farm, but they were not easy times and they were not necessarily happy times. He said, but his mother really took the job of discipling her children, gathering them around to herself very, very seriously. And so he just has fond memories of her gathering them around kind of like, her brood under her wing and said it wasn't just around the dinner table or in front of the radio, but to tell stories or to join their father in family prayers and Bible study um, and just to share the sense of the presence of God. He just, and, and he said of all the people that he had ever known in his life, his mother had the most profound influence on him. She has since passed away, but when he was talking about her, he said that He's sure that one of the reasons that God has directed and safeguarded him, I mean, of all of the evangelists and preachers that are out there, his reputation was never tainted. Um, he himself took some pretty extreme measures to make sure that he didn't fall, um, and he was always above reproach in his interactions with people, but he really attributes a lot of that protection and a lot of that um, being lifted up to his mother and his father praying for him faithfully and for his family. So 
he said that basically she she always did devotions with them she always prayed with them and basically when he went to bible school so when he was very first kind of beginning his journey of becoming a pastor and becoming a preacher his parents would go up to a room upstairs and they would kneel down every morning at 10 o'clock to pray for him in bible school and i just think that's such a powerful picture of just consistent and persistent prayer and who knows what would have happened without those prayers but it's pretty clear that at least billy graham recognized that their prayers and the prayers and the dedication that his mother had were really instrumental in protecting him and keeping him from the schemes of the enemy to derail him from the amazing things that God had for him. Yeah, I think out of that whole section that you told us about, this quote that he said really stood out to me. I'm sure one reason the Lord has directed and safeguarded me as well as Ruth, his wife, and the children through the years was the prayers of my mother and father. And that is exactly what we were talking about with the prayer legacy. So, you know, it's not a word that's thrown around a whole lot. Um, so when we're talking about prayer legacies, that, that really pick, uh, is the picture of what we're talking about. Prayers that you can pray. A lot of times you think of a legacy as something that a family member will pass down to their descendants, but it doesn't have to come from your family. You know, a lot of us haven't grown up in Christian homes, for example. Um, so don't feel bad if, you know, maybe your parents didn't pray for you that way, but it's something that you can leave a prayer legacy. And even if you don't have children of your own, you can leave a prayer legacy for others. So I don't know, does that kind of capture what you think of as prayer legacy, Jamie, or do you want to try to take a stab at a better definition? No, I think that's exactly what it is, is kind of the ripple effects of our prayers on the next generation and not even, not always people, but so much of it is our own people, our children, the people that are kind of in our sphere of influence. If you're a teacher or a Sunday school teacher, I've shared before that I just think as I'm teaching kids, I just always look around and think who's going to be the next Billy Graham or who's going to be the next whatever you know i mean i those are when we when we take time and pray for them we're paving the way you know god is using us to pave the way for them so that's i think that's a great example a great um definition well you know and i'm glad you brought it back to billy graham because when you were sharing the story uh, in the prayer adventure section, I was thinking, man, we should pray for Billy Graham, you know, so we're recording this in May. He's super old. You know, I, I guess I could have done the math and figured out that he grew up in the Depression era, but truly there are not many people left alive today who have memories of living through the Depression. Um, and I think he's a neat example of prayer legacy too, not just a story from his parents praying for him, but all the people that have come to salvation through his crusades and things like I have a friend in college who was saved by the testimony of someone who was saved at a Billy Graham convention so you know I, I always thought it was it was kind of cool like I was two degrees removed from a Billy Graham convert you know just thinking about that ripple effect so not just in our prayers but in our witnessing too you know so Billy Graham did a conference and some guy got saved there and he there and went on to share the gospel with my friend who's now gone on to do you know all kinds of neat mission work and stuff i think that's another example of kind of prayer legacy in action um and this isn't the part of the show where we often stop and pray but i do want to offer up prayers both for billy graham and for his legacy that the people that have been saved at his conferences and crusades would go on to share the gospel with so many others so let's just take a quick impromptu minute to do that God, I do thank you for the work of Billy Graham, and I pray that um, however much longer he has here on this earth, that his days would just be full of joy. I pray that he would not feel lonely or in a lot of pain, but he would just be full of your presence and full of your love. I thank you for the rich rewards that I know are waiting for him in heaven, and I pray that the people that have been saved as a result of his ministry would continue to multiply so that you know years from now even after he's gone there will be even more people saved as a result of his work than were saved during his time of actual outreach lord 
I pray for all the people listening and for Jamie and me too, that you'd be preparing us to leave an unimaginable prayer legacy, Lord, far more than we could have the boldness to think or imagine right now. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Alana, you actually, um, one, of, one of the, you mentioned that one of the inspirations for this topic of prayer legacies was your own grandmother. And you actually based one of your fictional characters in several of your novels on your grandmother. Can you tell us a little bit about your grandmother and kind of how she inspired that character? Yeah. So my grandma, like I said, just had a very deep passion for prayer and for missions and for the Lord. She died about one year ago, and it was just a few weeks after she died that I found myself writing Turbulence, which is book five in the Kennedy Stern series. And I don't remember exactly how it came about. I remember I was in church maybe about a week after my grandma died and just thought to myself, I really need to make a character after her. Um, she was, you know, kind of far out there, you know, like very eccentric, you know, you don't look at her. And I think we have this idea in our head that, you know, if you're a really old woman and a prayer warrior, you're probably, you know, very petite and soft spoken and you knit in a rocking chair all day. And that was, you know, that was my grandma. Um, my like seventh birthday party or something. She dressed up as a clown and was doing cartwheels. You know, like that was my grandma. Um, <laughs> but I think what she passed down to us, you know, first of all, there is a missions legacy. So her parents were missionaries. She was involved in missions. Her grandmother was a missionary. So I feel like that's part of her legacy but also just her prayers. I don't even want to try to guess how many grandkids and great grandkids she has. I know that, um, you know, if you were to count all of her descendants, it would probably, you know, be close to 100 or maybe more. And she was so committed to praying for us. And I feel very similar to that quote. I think that's why that quote from Billy Graham resonated so much with me where he says, you know, these good things and these blessings that have come to me and the way that God has protected me and my family, I feel are a direct result from the prayers of his parents. I feel that way very much about my grandma. And before she died, she had some health issues for a couple of years. So it was kind of touch and go for years. Like she would have a dip and then she would bounce right back and be, you know, perfectly strong and enthusiastic. And, and then she'd have another dip. And at one point, we're like, well, I don't know, Grandma, if you're going to die. And it was awkward to ask her. But I told her, you know, I would like you before you die to just pray for my children. So we put it on speakerphone and she, you know, kind of, gave her blessing to my children. She actually lived another couple years after that. But if I were to look back, you know, that's one of my real memories of kind of a tangible moment of her passing on her prayer legacy to us. I love that. What a, what a neat time that you had. Were your children able to spend time with her directly? Just a little bit. They don't remember too much. She came to visit us once after we moved to Alaska, but um, one of our sons, I don't think had been born yet, and the others were, you know, baby and toddler. So what are the, can you think of some specific prayers that she prayed for you that you can think of? Did she share those prayers or did you just know she was praying in the background? She prayed a lot for my writing. I remember it was um, the day that I found out she had died and, you know, I was just sobbing my heart out. One of the things that was so heavy on my heart, it was like nobody in the world will pray for me like grandma prayed for me. Mm -hmm. And it was scary to think about her being gone. And you know, my husband was really sweet, and he wasn't trying to make a theological point because I think there's so much that is mysterious about when a believer goes to heaven and leaves behind loved ones. Mm -hmm. But he just asked me, you know, well, who's to say she's not praying for you still? <laughs> and like I said, I'm not going to, you know, create a doctrine revolving around that. But I started to think about that, and, you know, and it did kind of give me some comfort. But, you know, she was just so thorough in her prayers. Like, all her prayers were for blessing, like for our family, for our ministry, for the church my husband pastors, for my writing. She never got to see the podcast come to fruition, but I know she would have been just so tickled pink by what we're doing here. So, um yeah, basically, when you ask what grandma prayed for me for, it was kind of everything. <laughs> wow. 
That kind of makes me tear up. I never met her, <laughs> but just thinking that, you know, that this would have been part of her legacy, you know, part of her prayer legacy. Mm -hmm. um, I really am. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's um, fine. So did she have an, ex now your grandma Lucy character had an extensive prayer ministry that was kind of like internet based, um, you know, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but like she prayed for people that she'd never even met. Did your grandmother have that kind of stuff going on or was that more of like kind of a modern fictionalization of, of what she did? Right. So Grandma Lucy is the fictional character based off of her. So she shows up first in Turbulence and then she shows up quite a bit in my new series of women's fiction. And that's what Beauty from Ashes, my newest release, is set in. And honestly, the, there were so many things my grandma did that I had no clue about. Like a few <laughs> weeks after she died, I was talking to one of my cousins. And he was talking about people at her memorial service, you know, like that he had never heard of. Like, I guess there was some young man who... I forget what it was like he was lost and asked her for directions once and then they just became like best friends <laughs> and <laughs> you know like he was this 22 year old you know guy single guy and like she kind of discipled him you know like just all kinds of weird random stuff so I know she was doing stuff like that all the time um, she was in and out of a nursing home for her last year so some of the time she would spend living with my aunt, which was, you know, home base. And sometimes she would be at the nursing home, you know, when her health would take those dips. And I remember asking her because, you know, up until the very end, her mind was, you know, completely vibrant, you know, and she never got feeble really other than in her physical body. And so I asked her, you know, Grandma, are you lonely there? You know, like, or do you get bored? And basically said, well, no, like there's so many people here to pray for. Why, like how in the world could I get bored? <laughs> wow. That is really neat. What a perspective, you know, what a perspective to have. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of your own prayer life do you think has been shaped by your grandmother and her direct example? You know, that's a really good question. Like grandma was involved in our growing up, but not... It was very much, you know, this is the grandma that we visit. You know, it wasn't like the day-to-day. -day. There was a short period of time where she lived in the same town as us, but I don't remember like being actively discipled by her as a child or anything. As an adult, you know, we would pray together, but I, I think that it was more not learning prayer from her, but just being blessed by her prayers, you know. And so I guess on this topic of prayer legacy, you know, it's a shame that not that we all don't have someone like that in our lives. But the neat thing is we can all become that to other people, you know, like praying for your own children and, and grandchildren. Like I just now, you know, those prayers for the unsaved that we've started and I've got my list of people I'm praying for. Like I've actually added my grandkids to that now, you know, I'm mm -hmm. like my oldest is 11. I'm nowhere near becoming a grandma. But, you know, I think she inspired me in that way, you know, just praying looking toward the future so that not just my kids would be saved but that their kids would be saved and their kids up until jesus returns i think is a that's one of the ways that she encouraged me in my prayer life and i think we might have people praying for us that we don't even know about there might be people in our lives or have been along the way that's what i almost think you know again not to make a theological point because i don't know if this is how it works but when the bible talks about storing up treasures in heaven i almost wonder if some of those treasures in heaven are going to be seeing meeting with those people and and seeing the big picture of how they had a prayer legacy in our lives and we didn't know it or vice versa people that we had been moved to pray for then and just seeing the fruit maybe we never see them again but god used those prayers i think that's something to keep in mind too absolutely yeah you know and it can kind of be, you know, like there's this whole movement, you know, to practice random acts of kindness for strangers and things, mm -hmm. you know, like random acts of just praying for people, yes. you know, it's a really, really neat thing to think about. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, even if you don't have someone who's passed down a prayer legacy to you, you can pass that on to others and you could be kind of that, you know, secret prayer warrior, you know, because like, like you said, Jamie, you don't need, you might not know that someone's praying that actively for you. But you could be praying like that for others. 
Well, just to leave the listeners with kind of a, a practical idea of what that looks like, what are what do you think are some ways that we can practically leave those prayer legacies in our own lives, both for people that have families and some that are single? Um, how What are ways that we could do that? I think that, you know, first you want to ask the Lord who he wants you to really invest in. You know, this isn't just like a, a quick, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take 10 seconds and pray for this person, you know, once a month. You know, I, I feel like if you're going to be leaving an active prayer legacy, it's somebody that you are so invested in on an emotional and spiritual level. You know, I think that's why if you have kids, that's probably the most obvious Um connection. It could be, you know, maybe you don't have kids yet, but you believe that God is going to bring children into your future. You know, that could be, but I would say the practical legacies that you can leave are just to be as, I guess the first one, you know, when I think about my own grandma, just to be as thorough as possible in your prayers and not just praying for that person, but for the impact that that person will have. I think that's a, a real key so that your prayers aren't stopping just with, you know, please bless Jamie and help her to love you, but, you know, bless Jamie and help her to be the kind of Christian that is going out and changing the world, you know, and, and having a deep impact and an ever increasing impact for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I did for each of my kids that I kind of add to little by little is I've made like, I, I call it a legacy journal. I don't know what it is, but they're these little journals because I just started thinking when they go out on their own, I don't, I'm not going to have constant impact, you know, or there are things that I do or pray for them now that I don't necessarily share with them. And so I try to write down different things and different prayers that I pray for them along the way and kind of background of the situation. But so that when I'm either gone or when they're gone and I'm not as directly involved in their lives that they will still have that tangible book of prayers for them that they can look back on and draw from hopefully and that God can use even after they're out from under the roof. I love that idea. Um, my mom, so my, my grandma's daughter died when I was three. So I, I'm lucky that I do have some memories of her. But, you know, it wasn't like we had decades to be, you know, mother-daughter. But one of the things that I found from her is like little baby books. And she would put little prayers and little Bible verses in those. And she saved my birth announcement. And it's got a verse in Psalm 84. The Lord will bestow grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly, which, um, you know, if I were to have a life verse, that would probably be it. And, you know, that goes back to just what she put on my birth announcement, you know, and I'm sure at that point she wasn't thinking about that being one of my only mementos from my time with her, but that was there. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about prayer legacies. This has been a really neat conversation. We're going to move on now to prayers for the unsaved. And today's prayer is part of a 30-day series called Prayers for the Unsaved. You can actually get all of these prayers at one. Well, you can get one a day for 30 days if you go to alanaterry.com slash unsaved. If you'd like to pray more regularly and not just every week when you join us for the podcast. So definitely go to alanaterry.com slash unsaved if you'd like to get all 30 days of prayer delivered to your inbox. So what we're going to do, I'll read this prayer. You guys fill in the blanks with the names of one to five people that God's laid on your heart to pray for um, so that they can come to know the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you have prepared a place for me. Thank you for giving me the assurance that one day I will be able to worship you in heaven where there's no more injustice or pain or fear. You have already conquered death. You have already conquered the grave. The life that you give is eternal and free to anyone who asks. Please extend that gift of eternal life to my friend. Let them know that you are the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through the blood of Jesus, which he shed for their sins. Teach them that you alone are God, that you alone are holy, and that you alone can offer them this salvation. God, I yearn for the day when I will be with you, worshiping in your heavenly kingdom. I pray that my friend would be there as well, glorifying your name throughout all eternity. Amen. Amen. So feel free to leave us a comment. You know, I, I just love this whole topic of the show. So if you have someone that's blessed you with their prayers, or if you are trying to leave a prayer legacy for someone else, just let us know about that, because I think it can be an encouragement to all of us. 
And you can email us too at prevailingprayerpodcast at gmail.com. We really enjoy hearing from you. And we're going to leave you with a blessing and benediction. May God grant us hearts of true humility and repentance, that we may grieve over our own sinfulness and stop grieving the Holy Spirit. May he forgive all our selfishness and pride and free us from the sins that hold us in bondage. May our hearts rejoice in the forgiveness he has given, and may we be quick to extend that same forgiveness to others. May we walk in humility, knowing that our sins have separated us from God, but may we rejoice in the grace he has poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And our benediction today is from 2 Peter 3.18. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen. Amen.